Good morning, everyone. I hope you are having a great Friday morning and welcome to Sip and Stitch. So my name is Carly Bell and I like to get together with y'all every other Friday for a machine embroidery tutorial from start to finish and we call it Sip and Stitch. This is our morning edition. So I have my coffee with me today. So I hope you are all doing great and thanks so much for joining me. So I'm just checking the chat. While I'm looking and I, I have a screen, I have a TV, I'm very excited about my husband finally hung a TV up in my craft room. So now I can binge watch my next Netflix shows while I'm working. But what's also great about it is I could put my computer screen up there. So now I can see the comments a little bit better while we are chatting. So hi, Kim from Michigan. Hi, Sharon. Happy holidays. Good morning, Stacy from South Tampa. Watching while you're at work. There you go, girl. Double task. <laughs> Multitask. Hi, Brenda and Tina and Arva and Renee and Linda. I hope you are all having a really great Friday. I am so excited about today's project. I am a little bit obsessed with Little Debbie Christmas tree cakes. I, every season when they start selling them at the grocery store, I buy it lots of boxes. My kids want them in their lunch kit every day. I'm eating one as a snack at least once a day. <laughs> and not only do I love them, but they are delicious. Now, not everybody can. Uh, uh, okay. That was not what I wanted to say. I wanted to say they are delicious, but not everyone agrees that they are delicious. But one thing that we can agree on, I think, is that they're pretty cute. And today's project, we are going to be making Christmas tree cake earrings. So this is going to be a super fun in the hoop project. And it's great for beginners. So if you've never done an in the hoop project before, this, this is a great way to start. And so super easy. Um, and I'm going to go over all the supplies that you're going to need to get started. So before we jump into that, hey, Amber, how you doing? All right, I'm checking the chat. Okay, um, before we get started, I gotta show you the shirt I made. So I got some new additions to my craft room recently. So I see my friend Amber at Bingham Bliss is on here and she got a fancy printer that I've been eyeing up, but there was another fancy printer that I, I found out before the one Amber got. Um, and it's called a white toner printer. And I've been doing sublimation for a little over a year now and I like sublimation. However, I sometimes get frustrated with finding the right shirts for sublimation, the, the high polyester count, and the fact that sublimation cannot print white ink. So you can't sublimate on a dark shirt without bleaching it first. So I wanted to see what other options there were out there for printing on cotton shirts and printing in full color, including white. And I, um, I got a Luminaris 200 white toner printer, just got it set up yesterday. I'm very excited about it. And I made myself this shirt to wear for sip and stitch today. So it says torn between looking like a snack and eating one. This is, this is my struggle right here <laughs> on trying not to eat so many Christmas tree cakes, but I, I, I just want to eat them all. So, um, I found this really cute design at uh, creative fabrica. So if you're interested in making yourself a shirt like this, you can go download this design um, and you can sublimate it. You can do it with vinyl or if you have a printer, either a white toner printer or a DTF printer like um, Amber at Bingham Bliss has, then you can print it um, and with the white color as well and put it on any color shirt. So I just I was very excited about my shirt. I wanted to show you all. <laughs> um, I have a link to the design from Creative Fabrica and a link to the printer all down in the description box below, along with everything that we're gonna need for today's project. And before we get started, last thing is I wanna do a giveaway. 
So a couple weeks ago, I hosted a holiday workshop that was a week long and we got together every day and um, through Zoom and we made five, well, actually six different holiday projects. Um, they were a mug rug. It was a um, in the hoop notebook holder, bag tag. We made an applique pillow. We made a little felty for a bow. And what was the last thing? Oh, we did a, um, a sweatshirt with a little um, design on it. So the workshop, the live portion of the workshop is over, but it was all recorded so that you can, anybody can go and watch it now and um, participate, you know, get in on all the classes, all the learning. And there's a private Facebook group for it as well. So when you have questions, so that workshop is still for sale. I have a Black Friday coupon for it, um, but I want to give a ticket away today. So at the end of the show, we're going to pull a name and someone will win a ticket to that workshop and you'll get access to all those recorded classes, all of those design downloads and the private Facebook group. So all you have to do to enter is just comment um, in either the live chat on YouTube or in the, the comment section on Facebook, and you will automatically be entered to win. So say, I want to win, say hello, whatever. All right. If you have a question during today's show, all those comments will get tallied and enter you in to win a free ticket to my holiday workshop. Um, and I have a link for that down below if you just want to learn more about it. And the coupon code is on the page at the top for, for Black Friday. So, yay. I'm still wanting to look at my computer and not at the, the TV screen where I actually can see better. All right. So, yay. Okay. Everybody's saying they want to win. So, that is today's giveaway. And we'll pull the winner at the end of the show. If you're at work and you're able to watch right now, but something comes up and you have to um, check out, um, it's okay. As long as you comment it now, you're entered to win. And um, I'll post it on Facebook and in my Facebook group who the winner is in case they're not still watching live at the end of the show. Okay. All right. So let's get started and talk about today's project. So today's project is a design from Melissa at Designs by Little B. And she has really the most amazing in the hoop designs. I love her notebooks. Um, she's got zippered bags that I love, hand sanitizer holders, but this one takes the cake, and that is the Christmas tree cake earrings. So we are going to be making a pair of these today. So the supplies you are going to need, first and foremost, is some sort of vinyl, whether it be marine vinyl, um, faux leather, embroidery vinyl. Um, this is a, a roll of white vinyl that I actually bought from Melissa um, in her Etsy shop. She used to sell vinyl, like occasionally she'll sell supplies, um, but I don't think she has any um, on there right now. But I put links to all the places that you can get vinyl from. Um, Amazon is definitely one. Uh, My Punk Broadery is a great place. Sweet and Sassy, Blanks, um, All Stitched Up by Angela has a few solid color pieces. I think um, Angela Jasmina still sells some on her website, Kids Custom Design. So I put links to lots of places where you can get the faux leather. Oh, and last choice, if you want to go buy some in person, Hobby Lobby has it. Let me get a roll so you can see. I just bought some in this pretty pearl color. Um, Hobby Lobby has faux leather in the ribbon section, um, and it's... It's about eight inches tall and it's called faux leather wide ribbon and you get two feet by eight inches and they're normally $4.99, but every other week they go on sale for 50% off. So that's, that's when I bought it last week when it was on sale. And so this was only two fifty. So if you need some in person, I think I did see white when I went, they have a few solid colors and then they have lots of pretty design ones as well. Um, and I forgot to mention, I think I have links in the description for, um, for all of the supplies, but I also um, keep everything up to date on my Sip and Stitch homepage. Let me put that up on the, on the screen so you can see. So the Sip and Stitch homepage is on my website. It's um, carlybell.com slash Sip and Stitch. Um, that website is always up to date with the project 
and all the links to all the supplies. So keep that in mind as well. If you can't see it in the description box or you're not finding what you're looking for, the Sip and Stitch website um, homepage should have everything you need. So we have our faux leather. I'm making two earrings today, but I think all, almost all the options can be done in a four by four hoop. So I have my four by four hoop and, oh wait, let me fix this. Okay, um, four by four hoop and tear away stabilizer. Um, this is all gonna get trimmed when we're done and it's okay because you can have a raw edge with this faux leather, but you can use tear away. You can also use cutaway as well. So use what you have, um, but you'll just need one piece of stabilizer and your hoop. Then of course your thread, I'm using three thread colors, white, green, and red. And I need tape. When we get to the last step of the design, we're gonna put some faux leather on the bottom of the hoop to cover up all our stitches. So we'll need some tape for that. And then I have all my other little handy dandy supplies. I always use my, um, my scissors. These are applique scissors. I won't be using these to trim today, but I use them a lot to cut threads. Um, my tweezers and my stiletto. Now, when we are done, we will be cutting. I have these little Fiskars um, nonstick um, scissors. I bought these at Joann's and they're not made for vinyl, but the in my craft room, these are my vinyl scissors. This is what I always use to cut. I like that they're short. They have a precise tip and they're sharp because I only use them on vinyl and um, I can maneuver around things pretty easily with it. So I have a dedicated pair of scissors for that. Then these are the things I bought off of Amazon specifically to make earrings. One is the little hardware pieces. So these are supposed to be sterling silver because my ears are very sensitive and I can attest that they are good because I've been wearing my earrings all week <laughs> and they haven't hurt my ears. So these are sterling silver. I think they had some gold plated options as well. I can't say how uh, well those are for sensitive ears, but the silver ones are good for me. So you have the hook, you have these little O-rings, and then they also have the little plastic stoppers um, to put on the back if you like to have those to keep if your earrings fall out easily. So this was a little set I ordered from Amazon. The link for that is, is down below and on the Sip and Stitch homepage. And then I also bought this little jewelry plier um, toolkit. And you really only need one needle nose plier, but I was like, well, if I'm buying one, I might as well buy a set. So this is a needle nose. And then this one's curved. I end up using two of them to maneuver, putting them together. Like I'm holding the ring with one and I'm using the other one to like bend it a little bit. Um, they also have... This one is cool, and I saw in a picture, it, it's, it's like a cone shape, and if you're doing with any wire, you can wrap wire around it to make like a, a perfect little spiral, or they're good for holding things. And then the last ones were some snips, so they actually cut. So that's the little set I bought for myself. If you have some needle nose pliers, that should be good enough, but I was like... I'm getting this. I'm getting all the things. Then when I was at Hobby Lobby the same day, I bought the ribbon. I was in the jewelry section and they had the little cards where if you want to give these as a gift or if you want to sell them, which I think these would be really big sellers, um, you can make yourself a little jewelry card and hook that on there. I'm sure they sell these on Amazon too. I don't have a link for that um, because I just got it the other day and didn't think about it, adding it to the supply list. But um, I did find them at Hobby Lobby and I'm sure you could search on Amazon earring cards uh, if you want to do something like that. Okay, did I go over everything? I think so, that's everything in front of me. I think I got it. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, Sharon brings up a good point and I, I think I'm gonna be moving my web page my website somewhere else because I, I people have this trouble and even when I on my own computer when I do Google so my website I promise you is secure and I could tell you the way you know a website is secure is and actually Google changed this a couple years ago where 
all websites have to have this. But you know, at the top where it, you have the, um, the address, it says HTTPS. The S is for secure. So before they changed that, it used to just say HTTP, semicolon, slash, slash, and then your address. Now it has the S, and the S stands for secure. So make sure you see that S at the top. And if it is there and it's still telling you it's not secure, it might be the browser that you're using, whether it be Safari, Chrome, uh, Firefox. But I'm having some issues with the company that hosts my website. So I was actually looking into switching over to another company today. So I'm sorry if you're getting this. I promise you the website's secure. Um, just make sure that S is there in the HTTPS. And um, if it's not working for you, maybe try a different browser. All right. Oh, yay. Um, Christy says, my, oh, Walmart has the earring cards too. Wonderful. Yay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, Christy's saying she's had some issues with my website too. Okay. Y'all, now I really need to change it over. Thank y'all for telling me y'all are having issues. I'm sorry you're having issues, but thank you for telling me because I need to get that fixed. So, okay. We have all the things. So I'm going to push some things aside now. And the main focus is the hoop and the stabilizer. My favorite thing about in the hoop projects is the only thing we have to hoop is the stabilizer. We don't have to hoop anything else because I hate hooping. <laughs> I don't enjoy hooping. I can't say I hate it because I love to embroider, but hooping is not my favorite. Um, but in the hoop projects are my favorite because this is all I have to do. And now we're ready to go to the machine. So really quickly, before we go to the machine, I want to tell you the design. It comes with three choices when you open it up. They're all the same size. You can open up just one earring. You can open up six of them at one time. And then I think the last option is 12 of them. There's an option where they got it. And they're all like spaced and ready to go. And um, the order of the stitching is that it does all the placement stitches at one time, all of the, the next stitch at the same time. So it just makes life a little easier on you when you want to make multiple. So when I did this, I did six of them at one time, at the ones in my ears, and then these other two pair. Now for today, because I don't want y'all to have to sit and wait for the stitch out of six pairs of, uh, you know, three pairs of earrings, we're going to open up the one and I'm going to show you how to copy it and color sort it so that it stitches both placement stitches at one time, both um, the next stitches. So you're not stitching one earring and then going and stitching the other earring. So I'm going to switch you over to Embrilliance. It's going to look a little crazy on my computer screen. So bear with me for a second. Okay, now y'all should see um, just my full computer screen and, and Brilliance is open with the design. So I can't see the comments while we're doing this. So hold on a second for questions um, while I'm showing you this. So I opened up the file that had just the one Christmas tree cake. I think you can see them. So here is my, my finder window. So this is what it looks like when you open up the file. Um, and I have in Brilliance Thumbnailer, so that's why I could see the little preview picture. So this is the one file, and then up here is the six, and then the other option is nine um, of them, so that you could stitch nine at a time. I think this one also fits in a four by four hoop, but I'm not certain. Um, and then they come in all the different formats. So you choose the format that's for your machine. And I'm using a brother machine today, so I'm used, I opened up this one, and that's what we're seeing here. So it's super easy. Um, on the side here, we can see there are five steps, and I am just going to copy this design. So I'm gonna select it, and up here with the two little pieces of paper, it says copy, I'm gonna copy it, and then right next to it is the clipboard, and I'm gonna paste it. Now, over here, we saw a new design pop up, but they're on top of each other, that's why you can't so I'm just going to click it 
and pull it to the side like that. All right, so, but on the side, you can see I have one design. It's gonna stitch the placement, the white, the green, the yellow, then the final. Then it's gonna go start stitching the other one. I want them to combine these to where they each step stitches at the same time. So to do that, um, and I'm in, in Brilliance Essentials, and it has this feature. So you're gonna go to Utility and Color Sort. Oh, before you do that, this design is ready to go. But if you're doing this with another design where you wanna learn how to color sort, the most important thing is that you make sure every step is a different color, okay? So the first step, it says devil red. The second step says white, black, bright yellow, purple passion. They all have to be a different color. If your first and last step are the same color, it's gonna make them all stitch out together, which you don't want. So make sure they're all a different color. Then go to utility, color sort, and it's gonna say this design has been reduced by five color changes. So they took away five steps. So it was 10, now it's five again. And I'm just gonna hit new view. And now I have my two trees. You see they're all on one step. And now it stitches both the placements, both the white, both the green, both the yellow, and then the last stitch together. So that's all you need to do if you want to stitch together just one pair of earrings for yourself and stitch them. The easiest way to stitch them is together like that. So I hope that makes sense. Then you would go to file, save stitch file as, save it on your USB stick in the format that goes with your machine. Okay, let's see. We're gonna go back. Hi, all right, now where is this? Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, so I hope that made sense. So let me stop and look at the comments. Um, if you had a question about that color sorting part and in brilliance, um, let me know now and I will look in the comments. Oh, um, Lauren said the screen is kind of small, small. Sorry about that. Um, Mary says, I'm looking for um, software. Do you recommend in brilliance? Definitely. I've been using it for years. Um, I own almost all the programs now that they sell and highly, highly recommend it. Okay. Yeah, Chrissy says, Melissa is a digitizer for this design. She does a great job with sorting um, her steps. Yes, she does. Excellent work. Yay, Kim just got a magnetic um, hoops for her brother. That's exciting. I love magnetic hoops. All right, Xander said, how do you save it again? So you go to file in the upper left corner and hit save stitch file as. You have a few options when it comes to saving. One is a working file, a stitch file, or a working and stitch file. So if you are stitching just a pair for yourself today, but say next week your mother-in-law sees them and like, oh, I want a pair, um, if you save the working file on your computer, it will save as a .be. Um, and that means you can just reopen it again and it will be just like you see it now where you color sorted it. Um, you also have the PES file, so you can just use that to stitch again. But say you wanted to make changes and you wanted to stitch two pairs of earrings now, you can open up your working file and make changes to it and then resave it. Um, I don't, sometimes I save working files. It depends on what I'm doing. Definitely when I'm digitizing, I use Stitch Artist to digitize. But other times, like when, say I'm making a birthday shirt and I'm merging a bunch of things together, like a number and an applique and a name, you could save that working file. So in case you need to make another birthday shirt just like that, but you only need to change the name, you open up the working file then you can change the name. If you open up the PES file or whatever format you saved it as, you can't make changes to it um, once it's saved as a stitch file. So that's the difference between working and um, stitch file. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, everybody's saying the brilliance is great. Um, okay, I'm checking. Uh, hey, Joe. Good morning. <laughs> she overslept. Um, that's what a working file is. Yes. Yes. Okay. So good. I'm glad all that makes sense. 
So I have my stitch file. I saved it as PES because I'm using a brother machine. I saved it on my USB stick. I unplugged my USB stick from my computer and I plugged it into my machine. Um, I'm excited to show you the machine I'm using today because this is a very brand new to me machine, but I'm very familiar with it. Um, but I want to show you guys. So let's go here. All right. So this is the Brother NQ1700E. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you may know I had a machine almost just like this, but it was older, um, an older model. And it was the sewing and embroidery combo it was the 3600D. I recently um, traded that in and got the 1700E, which is the newer version, and it's embroidery only, and I got a different sewing machine, which I'm, I'm excited to tell you all about, um, and do, I need to do an unboxing for it another day, but I, I, um, I traded in my 3600D and got this one. Now, this has all the same embroidery features as the the 3600D, or if you had the NQ1600E, um, all the same embroidery features. The one major new feature on this machine is that it has wireless capabilities. So you, with in Brilliance, you can, or if you have PE Design, you can wirelessly send your stitch file to your machine and not need the USB stick. So that's a really nice feature. I, I have the Baby Lock Altair and that's the first machine I had that had a wireless feature and I really do love it. I, I use it all the time. Um, but I haven't, I literally just took this out the box and I haven't set up the wireless yet. So I put my USB stick <laughs> in the back here and I have my design already um, loaded with the two Christmas tree cakes and they're color sorted and everything's ready to stitch. I have my white thread loaded. I have my bobbin um, and it threaded. So this will be the first stitches on this new machine I'm excited about. Okay, so I have my four by four hoop ready to just slide in. Okay, the, mission, the design is loaded. So all I need to do is lower the presser foot. Oh, I forgot. So this machine, you don't need to necessarily mess with the press in the back, it has a button. So you can just press the button to lower the raise and lower the, the presser foot. So the first stitch is going to be to show you exactly where to put your faux leather. So um, I apologize, I'm doing it in white, so it might be hard for y'all to see, but I'll make sure that you see it. And I'm just gonna hit start. And it already came unthreaded. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to raise the needle. No, it didn't come unthreaded. I'm crazy. I thought I saw it. All right, hit go. Lower the needle. Go. I don't know what I was seeing, but it looked like it came unthreaded. All right, there we go. Stitching our little tree. Yay. Okay. So let's see. Whitfield Way said, I'm so happy I made it. I just made the Christmas earrings. Yay. Hi, Erin. She's saying this is her first live. Thanks so much for joining. So, ooh, Joe brings up a really good question. So some people get really worried about the USB um, ports on their machines and that they can wear out. And I have heard this happen to people. Um, so if you have a machine that doesn't have wireless capabilities and you're always going in and out with your USB stick, there is a little attachment that you can buy on Amazon. And it's literally just like, I think it would be called a USB extender. And it would have a USB, uh, I guess the male part on one end and the female part on the other end. So you would leave that little extender plugged into your machine all the time. So you're not going in and out the port on your machine. You go in and out the port at the end of the extender, and that's where you put your USB stick. So that's a really good um, point Joe brought up. If you're worried about that on your machine, you can buy one of those little extenders on Amazon. They're probably like five or $6 
and that will keep you from accidentally messing up the port on your machine. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, so Linda just said that in the chat. She uses this small cable. Let's see, Linda says, isn't it called a pigtail, maybe? Yep, so she, she put a link for it at Embroidery Online. And that's the one she purchased. Thank you, Lynn, for sharing that. So Lynn's commenting on Facebook. So um, you can see the link that she put there. Norma saying she uses an extender too. Awesome. Okay, so we're done with the placement stitch. So I'm gonna take this out and let you see what it looks like even though it's in white thread. Can you see that? Yeah, so that's, that is the spot showing me exactly where to put my faux leather. So we're gonna go to the craft table and cut some faux leather. Okay, so here's my leather. Oh, this works out perfect. I can just cut pieces in. That looks about good. And then while I'm cutting that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the same size piece again, because I'm gonna need the same size for the back. when we're done. Okay, so I got a piece from my front and a piece from my back. So with the front, I don't think it's necessary to tape and secure the um, the vinyl down. Wait, hold on, okay. Um, I don't think it's, it's necessary, but if you want to, you can. You can um, tape it down in the corners. Um, but the next step is going to be the white portion of the Christmas tree cake. So I'm going to put that. Nope, wrong one. This one. Okay. Back on the machine. Make sure my leather is right over my placement stitches. Lower the presser foot and stitch. Okay, so now it's gonna do the pretty white satin um, outline of the cake. So while it's doing that, I can look at the comments. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of people are commenting that they use that USB extender. Um, on their machines to help save the USB port. So that's good. Let's see if what other stuff I missed while we were talking. Okay, Sanella had an embrilliance question. Do you need to ungroup before color sorting? No, I don't think that it's really an option on embrilliance. Um, it will color sort, oh, something's wrong. You saw my um my thread stand? It got caught in something. But I saw it move. <laughs> All right. Is it still stitching good? Yes, it looks like it is. All right. So I don't know what it got caught on. Maybe the thread just got caught on itself. I, I'm a big fan of using thread stands. I don't like the way the thread comes off of here. And sometimes I have issues. So I like using a thread stand. still stitching. Um, okay, so yeah, I, I don't think you need to ungroup before color sorting. You just need to make sure that all your steps are different colors. All right, I think I saw all the other. Um, so if you asked a question earlier and I didn't answer it, if you don't mind, go ahead and retype it now so that I can help you while the machine is stitching. I thank you, Rosa. She's saying, don't forget to put a thumbs up if you're on Facebook or on um, YouTube. I appreciate that. It helps. Um, it helps me a lot when you um, like 
um, my videos because then it, it shows them to more people um, when they're searching on YouTube. So if someone's searching how to use an embroidery machine, it will show the videos that have lots of likes on them. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think that's what just happened to me, Joe. She said she um, likes the thread stands, but um, sometimes the thread can get caught underneath the, um, the spool. So you have to watch. I know um, some of, a lot of threads have this little pull out. Let's see if I can do it. Ow, put out, put my nails in it. Um, they pop. So you see that? Um, I don't know if they'll focus on it, but this little bottom section pops out. And it's a way to like wrap your thread around the bottom so you don't have like a long thread tail happening. And then you can close it and it, it locks your thread in the bottom of there. So you have to make sure your thread is out and that is completely closed. Um, Cause if not, your thread can get hooked up in there sometimes, no matter if it's on a thread stand or not. So watch out for that. So Kim asks, do I have a video just on how to color sort and embroiled? Um, no, I don't have a video dedicated to that, but I do have a vid. I have several videos dedicated on um, embroiled tutorials in general. Like I go through a lot of different um, things that it can do. And we actually did a sip and stitch on that last month. Um, if you look on my YouTube channel and my past lives, um, you should see an embroiled essentials tutorial. And I do go through color sorting. Um, in that video. Yay, Karen finally made a live. Woo! I'm glad you're here, Karen. Okay. All right, so we are done with the white stitching. Now, I made a boo boo when I made these. I put the stripes as green and the stripes as red. And then I went downstairs and looked at my box, and the stripes are red and the sprinkles are, are green. So I'm going to stitch this new pair that way. <laughs> but you can make them whatever color you want. All right, so I'm going to cut my white thread. Pull this. And I want my stripes red. Stripes red. So I'm going to load my red. But you can make your your cake look however whatever colors you want but I wanted to change it up on this one so um, I ran my thread through the thread path cut it what's really cool about this machine versus the PE 800 is normally with the PE you have to make sure you lower your presser foot before you thread your needle with the 1700 it automatically lowers the presser foot whenever you press this side button so that's a, um, a nice feature all right, so I have my red thread loaded, lower the presser foot, and now it's gonna do the little stripes across the tree. All right, we were talking about something before that. Okay, I see Minerva has a Stitch Artist question. Okay, she's wanting to buy Stitch Artist, but wondering, do you have to purchase each one or can you get it all at once? Stitch Artist, you have tons of options. You can buy, it's separated in level one, two, and three. The higher the level, the more features you get. When you purchase level two, you do get everything in level one. And when you purchase level three, you do get everything in one and two. Then they have upgrade options. So say you're not too sure how much you want to digitize. You just want to get your feet wet. You purchase level one. But say in a few months, you're like, oh, I love this. I need more features. I, I want to upgrade to level two. You can purchase just the upgrade and pay the price difference between the level one and level two. I, when I started, I purchased level two and I loved it. And then I upgraded to level three. So I just paid the price difference. So no matter if you buy level three now, or if you do one and upgrade and two and upgrade, you, the money is all the same. You don't save any money by buying it all in level three from the get go, but it's totally your choice. So you have lots of options with it. And if you're interested in Stitch Artist tutorials in my CF Fans membership group, which is my um, paid for monthly group 
where I give um, a private Zoom class every month to members and a free embroidery design. Um, we have several stitch artists tutorials in that group. And when you join, you get access to all of my previous tutorials. So we've been doing it. Um, let's see a hiccup in the thread. Oh, since April of 2021. So, um, they have, you know, over a year and a half of tutorials in the vault, um, for the the fans group that you can look at um hi marissa all right wendy's saying she's driving don't look at your phone while you're driving wendy <laughs> um but uh, she's wondering what color thread i'm using because she's probably not looking at her phone um i'm using red um right now for the little for the little stripes. So the first pair of earrings I made, I did green stripes. And that's the opposite of, of what they actually look like on the box. So I'm doing red stripes, the red thread right now, and then we'll do the green for sprinkles. All right. So Mary X, would you start with Embrilliance Essentials? Yes. If you are brand new to using embroidery software and just want to be able to open your designs, use your embroidery fonts, merge two designs together, simple things like that, you want to start with essentials. I also highly recommend Thumbnailer. Um, that is the program that allows you to see a little preview window, window of your design when you're in your Finder or Windows Explorer um, on your computer. Okay, so um, Lauren asks is a really good question. Okay, so now we're stepping away from Stitch Artists and we're going to talk about Essentials and Enthusiast. Those are two separate programs. They are not like Stitch Artists where it's a level one and a level two and you add on and you get more features. These are two totally separate programs. You need to have, you need to have Essentials. If you buy Enthusiast, you don't get Essentials with it. Essentials gives you all of your basic features like resizing and merging designs together. Enthusiast gives you extra features like knockdown stitch, um, individual stitch editor, carousel um, pasting, um, lots of fun additions. But you don't get the essential um, features when you purchase it. So they need to be two separate purchases. So if you just need, can buy one right now, buy Essentials. And then when you're ready to have those extra fun features like the knockdown stitch by enthusiasts later, and it just kind of adds on um, in your program. And lots of people get confused when they're installing these programs. They think they have to do a whole nother install. It's not. You already have the program installed on your computer. All you're doing is adding serial numbers. And when you go to your window, I think it's help. At the top of your screen, when you have your Embrilliance program open, it says they have a serial number and you just add, when you purchase it, they give you a serial number and you just add that into the program that's already installed on your computer. Okay, so Kim asks, how do we access the videos for CF fans? You have to be a member of the CF fans group and I have a link for that in the description box below. And when you become a member, you get access to the CF Fans homepage, which has everything. And then I also have instructions on how to access the vault, which is just a little bit more of an organized way to look back at all of the past videos and embroidery designs that we've done. Okay, so we're done with the red stripes. So next is the sprinkles. And I'm going to do that in green. So I'm going to cut pull my thread out Okay, and lower the presser foot and go. 
All right. All right. Hi, Bevy Jean. I hope you're doing good too. I love this. Krista says, if I can use in brilliance, anyone can. <laughs> I love that. Krista, how is your persona coming along? Have you been playing with it? Let's see. Okay, Kim's saying she has um, been a member. She just hasn't been able to use it. So send me a message. Um, Kim, when we're done, you can either message me on Facebook or here is my email address. Um, email me and I will help you to make sure that you're getting the most out of your membership and accessing all the good stuff that we have, okay? And it's just hello at carlybell.com. Oh, something sounds funny. Nope, you're fine. Okay. Remember, if anything is seems to be going wrong, do not be afraid to press this button and pause your machine. Also, I'm going to pause it because I see it keeps going to like this back corner and I'm scared it's going to catch this when it's doing that. So let me grab a piece of tape. I have tons of tape like taped all around my craft table. I'm going to tape that down because it's making me nervous. It keeps doing that. Okay. So this machine cuts jump stitches and you see when it cuts a jump stitch, the hoop moves after each time. And so that's when you need to make sure that there's nothing that might get caught up on your, it raises the presser foot high anyway, but just in case. Yay, Karen wants to get Stitch Artist 3. That's what I have. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, okay, Sue brings up a good point. Why don't I use my multi-needle for everything I make? Um, I'm going to tell you why. When you're not watching, Sue, I'm using my multi-needle for everything I make. <laughs> but um, not, not, I can't say that. I use my baby lock, Altair, and my multi-needle. Um, I still go to my persona a lot, too, um, which is a single needle. Um, but for my channel, the whole purpose of my website and my Facebook page and my channel is to teach people. And not everybody has a big multi-needle machine or a big flat, you know, giant flatbed machine. So I want to make sure that people watching can see something done on a machine like they have. Um, and so they can understand how to go through the steps and make it. But most of the time when I'm showing you something I'm making, it can be made on any machine. This machine can be, this design can be made on the smallest brother machine that they make, the, the cheapest one that's only like $350. You can make this design on there. Um, but I like to switch it up. And every time I do a project, I teach on a different machine so that everyone can see how they all work. If they have a small machine and want to upgrade to a big one um, later, or if they have a small machine and that's it, and they want to see it done on a small machine. But like I've been working uh, in my craft room making jackets for my little girl's dance team. And I'm using my multi-needle <laughs> for that. All right. Um, let's see. Karen said, I posted kind of a long request. I think I'm considered spam. I don't know what that means, Karen. Um, okay, Krista, Krista just got the persona, which is a single needle free arm machine. I did a test stitch out, had a bit of an oil spot, but other than that, it was fine. We'll play with it more this weekend. Great. Yes. The first time you're oiling your machine, it's kind of hard to get a feel of how much oil you should be putting or like how much pressure you put when you're squeezing the little bottle. So you'll get the hang of that. You just need a drop. And if you're ever worried you oiled too much, just put some stabilizer in a hoop and do a little test stitch. And that will get that beginner oil off of your um, bobbin and needle plate and stuff like that. And so when you put your garment on, then you won't have oil on it. All right. Um, how do you know what's the largest hoop your machine can use? It all depends on the model. So really, if you are unsure with the machine you have, you can either um, open up your owner's manual 
um, that came with it, or if you can't find it, just Google the model number. So um, also you can tell me what machine you have and I can probably tell you <laughs> because I know a lot of them. Um, so you can Google your model number and pull up either the main brother website or any uh, like Sewing Machines Plus that sells the machine and it will tell you your max embroidery field. It's usually also the largest hoop that came with your machine in the box is usually the largest field it can stitch. The only exception with that is the small four by four machine and the PE 800, which I call a five by seven machine. Those two machines have a um, multi-positionable hoop accessory that you can purchase where with the four by four machine, you can stitch a field as big as four by seven. And with the PE 800, you can stitch a field as big as five by 12. But that's only because of the hoop and you have to have software like Embrilliance Essentials to split the design. You're still only stitching a five by seven area and then another five by seven area. Um, so that is really the max embroidery field. But mul some machines have multi-positionable hoops that allow you to get a little bit of a bigger feel. Okay, so we're done with the sprinkles. Now, this is what the part that makes this an in the hoop project. Um, so I'm going to go to my craft table. Oh, I totally forgot a supply that we need. I don't need it, but a supply I'm using um, when I was setting everything out for y'all. And that's my whole punch. But we'll need that after. Okay, so this is my little Christmas tree cakes. And you see I have some, some thread tails going on there. So I'm going to use my tweezers and scissors to trim those. And you could wait to do this till you're done, but they always bother me. I wanna snip them right away. Okay, so that's all nice and clean. Now we're gonna take our hoop and we're gonna turn it over. Ooh, we got a lot going on here. Okay, so that's from all those, um, that is from all of those jump stitches. I guess because this machine has to move um, to cut the jump stitch, it uh, it has long tails. Because when I the first time I stitched this, I did this on the Altair, and that one has a different mechanism. So you can trim some of these. Don't trim them too short, though. You still want to have them, and also you really don't have to trim it at all because we're gonna we're gonna cut this when we're done and it's anything that's poking out, it's gonna get trimmed. So you can not worry about it if it bothers you. But that is it. Then I am going to take my um, other piece of faux leather and I'm gonna cover up my trees. And now I need to tape. Let me remember to use all this extra tape I have around my table. So we're going to tape all the sides here. And I'm using the Kimberbell paper tape. You can use masking tape. You can also use like medical paper tape. That's an option too. So you want to tape up all your sides and then um, we are going to put it back on the machine for the last stitch. But I have a tip for you before we do that. Okay, let me look. All right, I see some questions up on the screen. I'm gonna get to those in just a second. All right, so now the last stitch is the outline and you can do this in whatever color you want. The first one I did it in red. I think this one I'll do in green. But before we start stitching, this is what I want to do. I want you to grab your top thread and hold it. Press the needle down button on your machine. If you don't have a needle down button, just turn your, your lever um, until the needle goes down and back up. Now you see my thread goes down and then comes out. I'm going to pull my top thread. And when I do that, the bobbin thread popped out. And so I'm pulling my bobbin thread. Now you have the choice here 
if you want to change your bobbin thread. I left mine white and you can see maybe on the back of here, it kind of goes, you could see the red and the white, the red and the white in between, but I'm not pe worried about people looking at the back of my earrings. If it bothers you, wind a bobbin with your top thread. So if I'm using green, go ahead and wind a, a bobbin just a little bit with that green thread and then replace it and put the green bobbin, the matching bobbin thread underneath. And then you'll have a nice solid color on the back. But what we're doing here is going to prevent any nesting from happening on the back when it does those first few stitches and the knot. So if you hold the top and bobbin thread out and let it stitch, it just has a nice clean back when you're done. And then we can trim this when we're done. But because this is going to jump straight from this one to the next one, I'm going to pause my machine so that I can do this again for the next one. Okay, so it's gonna do that. Okay, I press my pause button. Okay, yeah, it didn't start stitching. Okay, I'm gonna use my presser foot. You kinda gotta get lucky with, you press your pause button at the right time. <laughs> All right, needle down, needle up, pull. Okay, press her foot down, stitch. Yay, I like this. I like these colors. This matches better. Okay, so. We are done with the stitching portion of this project. And, oops, it didn't cut when it was done. Okay. Okay, so we're done with the stitching. So I'm just gonna trim these threads and then this is what the back looks like. And we just have a couple little tails that we can trim, but we don't have that nesting problem that sometimes you have within the hoop projects. We have like a big wad of thread that got stitched over because we held that bobbin thread out first. So now we're gonna go to the craft table and trim this. And let me answer those questions I see up there. All right. Doot -doot. Um. Uh, so Christy, said, what's the largest hoop for the machine I'm using? The machine I'm using today is the 1700E and it has a six by 10 hoop. I would put this as the machine that is a one step upgrade from the brother PE800. If you're a brother um, fan, um, Baby Lock also has the same machine. It's called the Flare, if you're a Baby Lock fan. Um, okay, so Cindy X is a good question. How do you know when to change to a new needle? I have a Baby Lock Alliance. Um, I've heard a good rule of thumb is for every three bobbins that you go through, like you've emptied three bobbins, that's a good time to change your needle. I am not great about that. I typically change my needle when it breaks. <laughs> but it's a good rule if you are want to be stay on top of your needles. All right, Michelle said she has the Innovis 1200D Disney. I wanna say that is just a older mod. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to Google that one. I don't know that one off the top of my head, how big of a hoop. It's either five by 10 or five by seven or six by 10. I don't know. I'd have to look that one up. But that one's, that one's a bit older. Okay. Yes, Trisha asks, do I have uh, any tutorials with the larger hoop? Yes, I have a recorded video. So one that I did a long time ago, um, showing you how to use that split hoop to do a um, baby quilt. And then we did a live sip and stitch last year where I did an applique shirt 
with it. So look on my channel. One will be under videos and one will be under lives. Um, Mary X, do I have an affiliate link for in brilliance? Yes, I do. And it is in the description box below. So if you're wondering what an affiliate link is, is I, um, have like a kind of referral link for all the, the supplies and the companies that I work with. And, um, if it's at no extra cost to you, but when you use my links to purchase things like in brilliance or supplies, or machines, um, I get a small commission um, as a thank you for referring people. So I really appreciate it when y'all use my links. It helps me to continue doing these tutorials and having this channel. Um, okay. Yes, so Crystal X, should in Brilliance Essentials be the first program we get? Yes, that should be the first one. And if you can also get and Brilliance Thumbnailer, that's a good add-on. It's only $39, and it allows you to see that little preview window of your design before you open it. Okay, let me stop there, and then I'll answer more questions in a minute. So I'm just trimming all these little stitches there. I could take the tape off. And this is when I stick it back to the side of my craft table. And then we have these little stitches, the um, tails on the back. Okay. So we're done with that. Now we can pop it out of the hoop and we are ready to trim. So you have a couple options. You can tear your tear away, tear away, right? And you can kind of pull it out from here or it all just gets cut when you're trimming. So to start, I'm going to cut right in the middle. So you're cutting through your front layer, your tear away, and your back layer. So all three layers. And I still see tails I need to trim. Um, and how you cut is totally up to you. The more you do this, the better you get at it. I can assure you on that. Um, you basically just wanna follow your stitch line and it's up to you on how far away you want to cut from your stitch line. I can't tell you an exact measurement, but I'm guessing I cut around an eighth of an inch away from my stitch line. And you just do what you think looks best. If this is too much of a pain in the butt for you to go around all these, by all means, just, just cut it like this. Okay? If this is your first project and you just want to get it done, just go around them like that. If you want to be more precise, you can use your scissors. And I use like the tips to get those corners how I want. So if I want it to go in there, I use my scissors like that. It's a little easier than trying to get it all the way there. And then round the corners how you want. I'm actually doing a worse job now that I, I trimmed it just a little. <laughs> okay. And so this is what I was talking about. If they had a bunch of those thread tails poking out on the side, it's all going to get trimmed because you're cutting through all three layers at the same time. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just trim it out um, the best that you can and either try to hold the shape or go around it a little bit if you can. 
All right, and then I'm not going to cut out the other one. Just go ahead and move on so we can get to all the questions and everything. So now you have a few options for the next part. I am using a hole punch that I have. I have the cam press, um, cam snaps table press. And I do a, a lot of projects that need snaps or eyelets um, or grommets. And so I have this tool, which I have a link for. Um, and I, I spoke to uh, Miss Judy, the owner of Cam Snaps, and she has made a bundle and a coupon code um, for y'all. And it's all the things that I have. So I told her everything I use and she made a bundle at a discount and um, added on a 15% off coupon code. So I have all that information in the description box. But the piece, the only piece I'm using for this is just my 2.5 millimeter um, hole punch. So this is a great punch for punching tiny little holes for snaps or, um, or even... Um, small little eyelets. So for this is perfect for the little earrings. And they just, you buy different attachments and they screw right on. So you have one press and then you get a lot of, you get little attachments to use um, on your press. Um, so this is all I'm using. You can also buy just a handheld. Um, they have a handheld option of this. It's called the, the hand professional press. So it's not as bulky. Um, if you want just a hand one and it still does all these attachments, then they have something like a, what is it called? A crocodile or a leather punch where you can change the different size holes that it punches. I have a link. I found one that S Sally Tomato makes that looks good. I put a link for that in the description if you just want something simple like that and don't need all these extra tools. So I'm just lining this up and I can hear it when it goes through and it punched. There we go. A little hole right through my airing. So whatever you want to do to um, to get that hole, you can do. Now I'm done with this. Okay, then we're going to do the earring hardware. Well, let me look because I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, okay, I'm just checking the comments real, real quick. All right, Cindy has well, that little um, not a free arm machine. I have not figured out how to do it with my multi needle because I don't have just a needle down option, but my persona I do. Um, I can just put the needle down and then pick it back up. So the persona, I can do it. That's a free arm machine. My multi-needle, I haven't figured out how to do it yet. Yeah, so Chantel was just saying she has a persona. Yeah, you, there's a needle down button on the persona on the uh, right under the screen. So you hold your top thread, needle down, needle back up, and the bottom thread should come right through. Okay. Um, okay, Sharon says, to use Silhouette Cameo to cut applique shapes, do I need both in Brilliance and Silhouette Business Edition? No, um, Sharon, you can have either one. And Brilliance has an option where you can inflate your placement stitch to be a little bit bigger and then save it as an SVG file. The only thing I have to, can you open up just a an SVG file in Silhouette Studio Basic. I know you need Business Edition to save as an SVG file, but I think you can open an SVG file with Basic. Um, the Business Edition also lets you open PES embroidery files and inflate them, inflate the placement stitch and make a cut from there. So I say either one, you don't need both, but having both is nice. <laughs> um, Let's see, Crystal also says, having a scan and cut makes cutting these easier. I have yet to play with my scan and cut. I'm wondering if it can cut through such a thick layer, but that is on my, my experiment list to try out. Um, 
Ooh, Karen has a good thing. Wouldn't adding a few rhinestones be cute? Yes. I bought one of these too for, what was it? Amazon Prime Day? I haven't played with it yet. Oh, don't, ooh, aye, aye, aye. There's a wire brush in there. I just poked myself on. It's um like you could set rhinestones with it. The only thing is I don't know how the heat, the, and look at all the little packs of rhinestone in there, cute. There's a wire brush I just poked myself on. I got this and haven't played with it yet, but now you gave me a good idea. I'm gonna leave that out on my table. <laughs> okay. Oh, metallic thread would be super cute too, yes. All right, yes, thank you to Judy at Cam Snaps for providing that coupon code. Awesome, awesome. Okay. All right, I think I got through the end of the comments now. All right. So we have our our little Christmas tree cake. We have our hole. Now we need our little earring kit. So I'm going to show you different options I did. The one thing I hadn't played with yet is bypassing these little O-rings and just using this. Let's try that because we can do that. Okay, my first time I did it, I put one O-ring. Can you see that? One O-ring here. And then I put my hook through that O-ring. However, when I put them in my ears, they always wanted to turn. Let me show you in person. Um, okay. The earrings I have on now have two of those O-rings. I'm going to tell you why. The first ones I made, I only put one O-ring, and you see this is how it's going in my ear. It always wanted to stay going to the side like that, so depending on what ear I put them in. Is this the other one? No, that one has two. This one. Um, so if I put it in this ear, then it would, it would poke out. Um, but it didn't lay like how I wanted it to. I wanted it to lay to the front. So the second pair I made, I put two O-rings. So let me show you what that. So this one has two of them. I have one here, then I have one going there sideways. And so then the hook for the um, ear, ear hook part is going through that second one. I don't know if you could see that. That makes it point the direction I want it to point. So when it's in my ear, it naturally wants to, to face forward instead of when it's in my ear, it wants to, to um, face sideways. The last option, which we can try today, I haven't done, is to skip the O-rings altogether and just put the hook in because that should make it go the direction we want. They'll just be a little less dangly, like they won't move, you know, dangle around in your ear. So to do that, they have a hoop at the bottom, but one end is open. So you can take your pliers and bend it. You don't have to bend it a lot though, I see. Now it's, it's bent. And think about how you want this. This goes in my ear. I want this to be in the front. What did I do? Oh, no, okay. The little ball came down and didn't. Okay, I want it to go this way. No, I want it to go this way. Mm, let's see if this will work. I don't know if you have enough room. And then I'm going to bend this back as best as I can and kind of smush it. Yeah, this works. The only thing with this is now it's, it's very stiff. Like it's not, these, um, these are really dangly and this one is not, it is very stiff. So that's, that could be a preference um, option for you. If you just want to do the hook that will keep it in place to where it's always facing front. Or if you want, to do the O-rings, do two of them so that it's facing the right direction, but still dangly. So I hope that makes sense for y'all. 
All right. So those little pliers come in handy for um, for bending the the little O-rings open and um, and then pinching them back close once you have it in the spot you want. So the ones I have on are the ones with the two O-rings. So you see they're they're dangly and um, but they essentially stay forward facing. Uh, this is the one we just made that doesn't use any O-ring and that one's just going to stay like that and it's not as dangly. It's also a little bit shorter because when you add those O-rings, that's going to lengthen them a little bit. So if you are having trouble with them being too long, um, don't use the O-ring and just put it directly on the little loop at the bottom of the hook. Which one was in my ear? This one. <laughs> okay. So how do you like today's tutorial? Was it fun? Do you like it? Do you think you can do it? Have you made some already? Tell me. All right. Everybody's saying you, they want to win. They want to win. They want to win. Yes. We're having a giveaway today. If you haven't yet uh, commented in the live chat, whether you're on YouTube, remember on YouTube, you have to be signed in. So as long as you have simplest thing is if you have a Gmail account, you can sign in to Google with your Gmail account. You don't have to have a YouTube channel. You don't have to put a picture. None of that stuff. Just have a name so that I can see who you are when you're chatting. Um, but you have to be signed in in order to chat. Um, your other option is on Facebook. You can comment under the video there. And if you comment on either one, you'll automatically be entered in today, uh, win today's giveaway, which is a ticket to my holiday workshop. And you'll get access to all of the um, six different classes um, videos that we did and the six different designs for the projects that we made and a private Facebook group. So if you haven't commented yet, make sure you get that in now. All right. I am looking... At the comments. Oops, wait. All right, Krissa said, I got the cam press to use in bag making and other um, projects. The Scan and Cut has a plethora of blade choices. Thank you, Krissa. I really need to play with my Scan and Cut. Really need to play with it. All right, Joe asks, What sort of wires are these? Are they sterling? Yes. The link that I put in the description box is the link directly to the ones that I bought. They are um, sterling silver, 925, um, and I have very sensitive ears, and I've worn these all week, and they have not bothered me. So if you have an ear, if you're, like, allergic to nickel, um, they are nickel-free. They are. Now, I can't say that they are solid silver. They have to be more expensive if they were solid silver. I think they're silver-coated, but they are nickel-free, which is what important for me. I think that's the thing that I am allergic to when it comes to wearing um, earrings, but I can attest to these. They're good. They're pretty, they're not tarnished, not discolored, and they haven't hurt my, hurt my ears. So, um, that's what I'm using. All right. Yep. So Joe was saying she was just about to suggest to use, um, two uh, of the o-rings yay okay yay so everybody, everybody looks like they're so excited they are cute um and they can't everybody can't wait to make them so yay i'm excited um oh so uh whitfield said they already made some earrings but they made snowflake ones so now they can make some christmas tree ones so yeah now you can look around so melissa at designs by little b has several different earring design. So if you've made, you want to make these and you're like, I need to make more earrings now. Um, check designs by Little B. They do have more designs. I've also seen, um, is it designs by Baby Moon or Baby Moon Designs? She was one of the ladies. Her name is Sheila, I think. She presented at the Applique Getaway. She has a ton of beautiful um, in the hoop earring designs. Some of hers are with faux leather and some of hers are thread and they're like um freestanding lace so once you get started making some you have tons of options of other designs out there where you can make a whole array of earrings for yourself or your friends and family all right everybody's like "Ooh, giveaway um yes people are gonna make some for their co-workers 
Oh, Mary said, bummer. I just bought a huge lot uh, from KM Snaps last month. I know I bet they always get me for Black Friday. I, I usually order a bunch of stuff for Black Friday. But this coupon code is good just for the bundle. And you can choose either the pink um, press like I have or the handheld press. The handheld one is, is a good bit cheaper if you're looking to save a little bit money. But the table press is really nice to have. I have heard from people that have arthritis. The hand press is not bad at all. Like it, it, it does not, if people that suffer with their hands and, and I know one of the sets I bought on Amazon before is like really hard to, to press the cam professional hand press is not that difficult and works well. Okay. I'm looking at the comments. Ooh, Linda says she made Grinch earrings uh, last year. Um, that sounds fun. We need Grinch earrings too. <laughs> Norma asks Joe, did you make snake earrings? Joe, that would be good for you. Okay, she's talking, Joe's saying that she got some, um, some for her ears because our ears are sensitive too. All right. Okay, Jessica said she likes the idea with the double um, jump rings. I'm calling them O-rings, so jump rings. Okay. Yay. Natural Sister says she can't wait until her machine comes in so she can make them. Yay, congrats on your new machine. Um, how, okay, Joe, um, how did these cake things get to be such a hot thing this season? They've been around a long time. I've been obsessed with them for a while. I didn't start seeing embroidery designs for them. I think I didn't notice them till last year, last Christmas, because Melissa came out with these last year. These aren't, these aren't new for her site. And then other designers like Parker on the porch um, came out with some Christmas tree cake designs last year. I bought and I haven't made it yet. Is the um, like the garland, the bunting um, of the little cakes. And then I bought some uh, little of the wool felt balls. So I'm supposed to make garland for my pegboard and I haven't made it yet. I'm going to try to work on that this weekend <laughs> so I can have it. But I've, I started seeing designs for it last Christmas. And then now I'm noticing all of the, um, wait, let me take that off, um, shirt designs. So I got this off of Creative Fabrica and made myself a shirt. Um, which to, to go with it. So <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, okay. So, oh, I forgot to mention. So the link for the earrings are in the description box and Melissa did give me a coupon code. I can't remember what it is, but it's, it's written down. Let me, I don't know how to see it on my screen. I put it on the sip and stitch homepage. Let me look there. Um, and my computer being slow. Oh no. I have to sign in. Okay. What is it? Okay, so the coupon code is SIP and the word AND, A N D, stitch, all spelled out to save an extra 30% if you put $5 or more, um, if you purchase $5 or more. The thing is, Melissa told me she already has a really good coupon going on on her website right now. So I don't know if they'll both work together. So go check it out and see um, if the sale she has now is better than using the coupon. But the coupon code is all spelled out, SIP and STITCH. All right. Um, yeah, so... Um, Krista said she made some of the freestanding lace earrings and that they're not as scary um, after you make one. Yes, I know. I love freestanding lace and it's super duper easy, super easy. You just have to have that good woven wash away stabilizer and thread and that's it. And you're good to go. All right. So Krista, I'm going to have to get with you about the scan and cut. She's telling me all the, um, you only got as far as turning it on. <laughs> We're in the same boat. You're ahead. You're ahead of me. You're doing much better. Um, okay. Yay, Dilly. Thank you. I hope you enjoy your holidays too. 
Thanks, Jody says she loves my t-shirt. Um, yes, so there. Thank you for spelling it out for me, Brenda. So it is SIP and Stitch. That's the coupon code for designsbylittlebee.com. And that should help you to save 30% off a purchase of $5 or more, unless the sale that she already has going on is better. All right. Yay. Okay, so Melissa currently has half off of a $20 purchase. So that's better if you get more things. All right, everybody wants to know where the Grinch earring designs are from. Somebody tell us. I know I saw good Grinch designs at Crashing Waves. I actually bought some a few Christmases ago. I don't remember earrings being in it, though. It was like hand sanitizer holder and some other cute things. I don't know if they have earrings, but I know Crashing Waves had cute Grinch designs. Um, <laughs> Jessica said she just found a chocolate Christmas tree cake while cleaning her kitchen. <laughs> Bonus. I need to go clean my kitchen, see what I can find. All right. Yes, thank you to um, Melissa for the sale and the coupon code. All right. Oh, Norma brings up something good. I forgot to tell y'all. Um, am I presenting at Sewing Machines Plus next week? So I um, am a big partner with SewingMachinesPlus.com. That's where I get all my machines from. And I'm soon going to be teaching classes exclusively um, for their customers for certain machines. So you're going to learn more about that in the future. But next week, they're having their week-long virtual event called Countdown to Christmas. And if you've ever been to any of the Sewing Machine Plus virtual events, they're super informative. You get to learn about all the different machines out there, whether it be sewing, quilting, embroidery, um, even um, the scan and cut. They have, um, oops, sorry, my camera likes to blink. Um, all kinds of things. Um, but they do a week long virtual event and they'll do like little segments on each machine and they'll either have like a national educator for that brand or myself, I'll be teaching um, a class on how to make an in the hoop um, key fob and how to personalize it on your machine. And so it's kind of a similar to today's project where you just need your hoop, tearaway stabilizer and some faux leather, any, any kind of your choice. And I'm gonna show you how to make a key fob, um, stitch a name on it. And then there is one piece of um, hardware that, that you pinch when you're done to turn it into a keychain. So I'll be teaching that on Tuesday. I wanna say at 2 p.m. Central time. So that will be 12 um, Pacific um, or three Eastern. <laughs> all the time zones. But yes, I'll be presenting um, next week. I'm really excited about it. And it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. <laughs> Joe's saying she wished she could digitize. There needs to be more snake designs in this world. Yes, I totally agree. Okay, and she hopes that, that I'm not on when she has her doctor's appointment. So the cool thing about the um, week-long event is that it's all on YouTube or their Facebook page. So if you're working or you have a doctor's appointment or you're busy and you miss the segment you really wanted to see, you can go and rewatch it. It's on their YouTube channel. And so you can just back it up and get to the point in the show that you want to watch. Also, I wanted to tell you if you see any good deals on machines or um, supplies that you want to get for yourself, um, and you want to get the sale that they're going to be having all week, um, please call my friend. So this 800 number, that's the general line to Sewing Machines Plus. So if you ever want to call and talk to someone, that is the number. However, Jean is my um, direct contact with Sewing Machines Plus. So if you ever want to call and say, hey, Carly Bell referred me, you need to talk to Jean. And her um, extension is 139 and you can call and um, ask her about any machines you're interested in. If you see a good deal and they say it's a call-in special, that's when you'll especially have to call to get the sale pricing or if they're throwing in extra things with it. And then another thing with Jean is when you tell her, I referred you, ask her if she can use my coupon code in addition to any of the good sales um, that they're having next week. 
and that can maybe help you get an extra 10% off um, of your accessories or supplies um, of what you're buying. So if you see anything good, make sure you call Jean and make sure you tell her that I referred you. Okay. Ooh, Trish said she found a brother's scan and cut at an estate sale, practically new. And she hasn't done anything with it, <laughs> but it looks really nice on her craft table. Same here. <laughs> we need to play with the scan and cut. We need to play with it. Um, yay. So um, Karen's saying she's hoping to get some Durky hoops, which are awesome. I love Durky easy frames. And the. Um, I'm also playing with their new sash frame I got for the persona. I need to do a video on that too. Um, so yes, thank you for calling Jean and telling her my name. I appreciate it. All right. Okay, guys. So I think that is everything for today. The only thing we have left is to have a giveaway. So who's ready for a giveaway? All right. If you haven't commented yet um, in either the live chat on YouTube or on Facebook, get your entry in now. Just say, I want to win. And I'm going to pull a winner for a ticket to my holiday workshop, which is six different um, private classes that were recorded and you get access to those classes, all the designs for those particular projects, and a private Facebook group for um, workshop attendees where you can um, ask me questions and um, post pictures of the projects you make. It's a lot of fun. Um, so yay, everybody saying they want to win. Okay, so let's go to what I have to do. I have to go to share. And I have to pick the giveaway. Okay. All right, I see everybody good going. Okay, so y'all ready? We have 86 people entered today. So let's go ahead and draw. Yay, Sanella! Sanella, I can't remember if you already attended the workshop. Let me know. Let's see. I can't remember if I remember your name already being attendee. Let's see. All right, yay! Okay. Gina says... Today's session was fun. It's amazing how your friends here have grown. Yes, I know. It's, 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 it's been an amazing journey um, since I started. I started my website uh, five years ago and um, really started doing videos a little about two years ago. Um, so it's, it's crazy how much it's grown and it's been so much fun. So much fun. All right. I don't see Sonella on here, but I'm pretty sure she was in the workshop already. So Sanella, if you were in the workshop already, I'm going to refund you the money that you paid to be in it. Okay. But thank you so much for watching today. And thanks for everyone who joined me. I hope you had fun making these earrings are going to go make them now. I want to see pictures. Um, if you're not already a member of my general Facebook group, please come and join us. I have a link for it in the description. Um, box where it's a free Facebook a group to join. It's a wonderful community of people that are super helpful whenever you have problems or questions. And it's also a great place to post beautiful things that you make that maybe you can't show anybody else right now because it's their present, <laughs> but you have to show it off. So you could come show us. So yay. All right. Yay, Joe saying she remembers when uh, I had my first sip and stitch and it was the Parker on the porch bag. And was my mind was blown. Yes, I my mind was totally blown when I figured out we can do zippered bags and on our embroidery machine. It's so cool. So, so cool. So I think that's it for today, guys. So if you enjoyed today's class, please make sure you hit that thumbs up or like button and share it with your friends and your other crafting communities that you are in. If you know someone that is looking to learn how to use an embroidery machine, send them my way. I want to teach them. <laughs> um, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. 
Um, I am excited to be doing a bunch of things with my family coming up soon, and I hope you all have a great time with yours. Um, I am trying to still figure out what I'm doing for the rest of the month because we have so many family things going on. So I don't think we are going to have another sip and stitch. If I would keep to my schedule, it would be on December 23rd, which I'm pretty sure that's the night I'm having my family over um, for our Christmas celebration with my dad's side of the family. So I'm going to say no sip and stitch on that day. We probably won't get back together again until after the new year for our live sip and stitch. However, I am working on several videos that I'm going to record to show y'all. And that is unboxing all of my new toys <laughs> that I've gotten <laughs> for um, recently. And that includes the, the printer that I made my shirt on. I got a new sewing machine and I got a new uh, big embroidered machine, which I'm excited to tell y'all about. And, and with some of those machines, we're going to start offering um, Zoom classes. So anyone that purchases those machines from Sewing Machines Plus, will get a Zoom class with me showing them how to set it up and use it. So I'm really excited about starting doing that. That's all going to start after the new year. So if you want to make sure that you're keeping up with all the fun things that we're doing, I have two favors to ask you. One, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to my channel because then I think if you subscribe and you hit the little bell button, you'll get notified whenever I have new videos. Um, the second thing is please subscribe to my email newsletter. I have a link for that below. Um, it's free to join. I'll send you a newsletter once a week to your email box. And it tells you everything that's going on, whether we're having a sip and stitch, what's it about, um, links to the design and the supply. I'm going to be on Sewing Machines Plus. I'll show you um, a link to that. Um, whenever I see machine, machine sales going on, I have that. I do Sometimes I do a design that I'm digging. So if I see a really cute design somewhere, I'll um, show you that or share past projects with you that maybe you missed. So it's, I put a lot of work into it every week to keep all of y'all updated on all the fun things we have going on so that you don't miss anything in case you're not on Facebook or you don't check YouTube too often. Um, the email newsletter is a really good way to keep up with everything that's going on. So I think that is it for today. Oh, and Norma said CF fans. No, we're definitely having CF fans. So, um, the CF Fans is my monthly membership group we talked about earlier. Um, it's through Creative Fabrica. In that group, we do a private live uh, Zoom sip and stitch. So you can join me by Zoom. It's a lot more interactive to ask questions and talk to me about whatever project you're working on or the project that we're going to do for um, our class. So that is still happening. That is going to be the Tuesday or Wednesday after Christmas. So I have to schedule that. I will put it on the CF fans homepage when I have the date set in stone. So we will still have that and still have our free embroidery design for the month for the CF fans. Um, but our regular sip and stitch probably won't come back until after the new year. All right. Yay. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's see. Everybody's wanting to know. So the new toy unboxing. So I'll tell you, because I can't keep my mouth shut because I'm so excited. Um, so the new things that I got, I actually put a preview of it in my email newsletter I sent out on Thursday. So if you got my newsletter, you know what new machines I got. <laughs> um, the sewing machine that I got is the Juki 2010Q. It is a semi-industrial straight straight stitch machine I've been eyeing up for like well over a year and I'm very excited um, to use that specifically for um, piecing my quilt blocks and I am trying to start getting into bag making and using the same faux leather that we're using for our embroidery stuff to stitch some little bags and purses and things like that so that machine I've heard is really good for that. And then the big machine I got is the new Brother Six Needle Embroidery Machine, the PR680W. Um, so I just set that up. I filmed unboxing it. So I'll be releasing that hopefully next week. And so you can see that machine set up. And that's the machine I'll be teaching um, a class for, um, for Sewing Machines Plus once a month. So anyone that buys that machine will get a class with me. We're going to start doing it with the Brother Six Needle 
and my brother one needle um, persona. So that is all really exciting. And remember, if you're interested in any of those machines, call Jean. Okay, tell her I sent you. <laughs> all right, yay. So yeah, Sherry's saying she's so excited for the six needle. Sherry has a fancy tin needle. Um, so, but yeah, the six needle is really nice and I'm excited to, um, to try it out and start stitching some projects on it and showing y'all about it. So those are the, the fun new things. I gotta, I gotta film, finish the unboxing of this machine we used today, the printer, the Juki and the six needle. So those are all the new machines coming to the channel and unboxing videos. I'm hoping to get done before Christmas. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So yay. Diane said she, um, got this machine and hasn't unboxed it yet. The Juki. Yes. Yes. So I, um, unboxed mine, but I'm going to do a video. I mean, it's, it's basic, the setup, but we're going to do some videos on getting started with it and maybe making our first little project. So you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So, all right, guys, I think that is it for today. How did I make out with time? Good. We're under two hours. <laughs> I, I am known for turning a nine minute project. It's literally, my machine says these earrings take nine minutes to stitch up into an hour and a half or two hours because <laughs> I can't stop talking. So it's fine. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed everything. Remember all the links are in the description box. If you haven't, if you're watching the replay and you have any questions that didn't get brought up in the live today, you can um, write a comment down below the video and I will try to get back to you. And um, other than that, if you have any questions, you can always email me at hello at carlybell.com and I will be happy to, to help you and get back to you. So I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday, a great holiday season. Hopefully I will see you next week at Sewing Machines Plus Countdown to Christmas. I'll be on on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central Time, teaching a class on how to make a um, personalized key fob keychain. Makes a good Christmas gift. And then make sure you su subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll be coming out with more videos that are not live so you can see all these new uh, machines that I'm going to start working on, okay? So thanks again. And I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. So bye, guys.